In this video, I am once again going backpacking with funky ultralight backpacking gear. A few months ago, I did a video where I unboxed a box of funky backpacking gear from Garage Grown Gear and then took it on a trip. And at the end of that video, I realized that I probably could have gone even funkier with my gear. So for this video, I have curated a kit of some of the most unique and also most fun ultralight backpacking gear sold by Cottage Brands. And I am taking all of this stuff on a backpacking trip today. I love of trying gear from Cottage Brands because I feel like it shows just how innovative people can be. All of this gear was created because someone saw a problem with their backpacking kit and thought, I have a solution for that. So now I want to see which of these pieces of funky backpacking gear, if any, could find their way into my core backpacking kit. This feels like a good time to mention these big paddles attached to my pack. Those are for an ultralight pack raft. <laughs> so hard hike. This is insane. Bag full of wacky fun gear. <laughs> What? What could possibly go wrong? It looks like it's actually going to start raining. With that, let's get to hiking. Woo! Woo! Yeah! This is my show, gosh darn. Right away, we have a bit of a challenge in front of us. I'm going to be gaining more than 1,600 feet of elevation in less than a mile. <laughs> Three, two, one, begin! Oh, already hard. All right, slow and steady. All of the audio is just me, me like heavy breathing. Whew. Okay, fleece is coming off. Up, up, and away. It's like comically steep. Oh my God. <laughs> My legs hurt. Woo! So I am here with Abby and Rainer. This trail has been nonstop up. You've gone 0.3 miles. 0.2 according to my math. We've gained about 300 feet of elevation. We have about 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1,000, 1,100, 1,200, 1,300, we have about 1,300 feet to go. This was the most discouraging check-in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we've gone a quarter of a mile in 20 minutes. <laughs> that was a really long 300 feet. Wow, this is hard. We are going straight up through these trees. I weighed my pack at the trailhead and it weighs about 25 pounds. Relatively speaking, 25 pounds is not that heavy, but I'm just thinking about all of the kind of luxury stuff that I have in my pack, but because it's all ultralight and all essentially created with the intention of being super lightweight, but also like kind of fun and unique, it just hasn't added a ton of weight to my pack. And that's pretty awesome. This is no joke. Luckily, this trail is totally shaded. It's a beautiful, like somewhat cool day. The weather's kind of perfect to be exerting ourselves this much. So that is the plus side. Downside, we're uh, less than a third of the way there. Tally ho, what the hell? It's like almost doesn't even look like a trail. It's just so steep. This is insane. Whatever, just think flat thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> That's such nonsense that I can't even argue with it. Is it hard or is it just really long? <laughs> We've officially come up 800 feet of elevation, which means we are about halfway to the top. This is probably the steepest trail that I've ever hiked on this consistently, I think. It's also really well maintained and fairly easy to navigate. Kind of no complaints there. We still have at least another 800 feet to climb and probably another three quarters of a mile until we get to the lake. But hopefully in the next half mile or so, the trail will start to level out. We passed a couple of other hikers. Well, a couple of other hikers have passed us. But otherwise, pretty quiet trail. Final stretch. Excuse me. Check this out. We have this long stretch of flat trail ahead of us. These gorgeous fall colors. Look at these beautiful leaves. Oh my gosh, and blue skies. Wow. This is so beautiful. Yeah, we got a little climb. 
climb here. We're coming up a final steep stretch of trail. Looks like we're about to break through the trees. You can kind of see whoop, behind me. And then we should be at Lake Minotaur. How y'all doing back there? Ha! Whoa, to the lake. You can kind of see some craggy peaks in the distance. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Welcome to beautiful Minotaur Lake. This is stunning. The first thing to do is going to be to find a campsite to set up all of our stuff and pull out all of the fun and funky backpacking gear that I brought. Good work, team. Miranda yeah. sandwich. <laughs> this might be one of the most beautiful alpine lakes I've ever been to. Beautiful. my gosh. Oh, okay. This has got to be it, right? This has to be the one. This is incredible. Wow. So that is Theseus Lake down below us. Oh, beautiful. Welcome to camp. We are going to get our packs off, eat some lunch, and then after that, I will get to show you all of the funky and fun gear that I brought with me. Break. My tent that I'm using is one that you'll have seen me use in many, many videos. And that is the Nemo Hornet Osmo Elite. I'm gonna go ahead and get my tent set up and then I will reveal some of this fun and funky gear that I brought on this trip. I want to wake up to that beautiful view. Make sure my door face is out. Wow, that was like such an old person noise to make. I'm 33. <laughs> the first piece of truly funky backpacking gear that I brought with me is this little thing, which is a brand new super ultralight pad inflator. This is called Pad Pal. It is tiny, tiny, tiny. <laughs> <laughs> the way this thing works is that it actually attaches to a battery pack that you have to carry separately. Ah, it's an adorable noise. Hang on, hang on one second. Hold please. We all see it inflating now, right? No. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Use our error then, because I know that it works. I tested it. You have it on backwards. You have it on upside down. <laughs> <laughs> I like, kind of want to cry. <laughs> okay, take two. <laughs> All right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the attachment on the right side of the pump, which is gonna be not the side that has the little protective guard, which seems obvious now that I say it out loud. <laughs> okay. There we go. Now we all see it? Right. I think it's gonna be done in like two seconds. There you have the pad valve. Okay, now you might be wondering why I blew air into this at the very end rather than just waiting for it, this little tiny thing to fully inflate it. What I have found when I tested this at home is that it was really hard for this to get the sleeping pad to absolute maximum fullness, but it can get it almost all the way full, which is the most annoying part of inflating a sleeping pad in a matter of like five seconds, which is incredible. Pad pal, I have two other pretty fun and funky things in my sleep system. Get my sleeping bag in there. The sleeping bag that I'm using is actually from Outdoor Vitals. This is the Summit 15, I think. 
The reason I brought this bag is that one, it's gonna be pretty chilly tonight, and two, I wanted to use a sleeping bag in conjunction with one of my other funky pieces of gear, which is this super lightweight alpha sleeping bag liner. So if you don't know alpha material, this material is like super, super thin and warm. Like, I think it's really neat. It's really lightweight. It's got a little cinch hood. It feels really soft. Boom, that should keep me nice and cozy tonight. The other kind of fun and funky piece of gear that I brought with me is the pillow strap. Pillow strap is this company that makes these stretchy pillow cases that are designed for either your backpacking pillow or like a jacket or whatever. You stuff that in there and then you use this strap to go around your pad and tighten it so that your pillow stays in place. I'm using my favorite Nemo pillow pillow. Oh, it's so stretchy. Whoa. Oh, that's so cool. If the bright colors are not your thing, they do also come in a lovely variety of like neutral colors. So you don't have to have tie dye rainbow. <laughs> We're gonna slide that around my pad, tighten it down, a pillow that will not move at night. Oh, wait a second. I totally forgot that I have something else with me that is really bizarre that I kind of have some mixed feelings on. I'm gonna get it set up and then I'll show it to you. <laughs> wow that's actually like pretty perfect <laughs> but uh that's pretty great this is what they call caveman tv from Atotech gear this little piece of like 3d printed plastic is designed to hold your cell phone and then you hang it in your tent like a television. So you can lie in your tent in inclement weather and watch a movie. Now, I can already hear the comments <laughs> coming in that are like, why on earth would you want some way to watch TV when you're out camping? You know, when it's beautiful and you have all these gorgeous views around you. But I think the reason that Autotech gear made this is probably mostly for through hikers who are like, cranking out some serious miles in some really bad weather and there are definitely nights where I can imagine someone being like you know what I actually don't want to sit out in the rain and do nothing I actually do want to watch a movie in my tent and so this makes it possible to do that without like holding your phone over your face and potentially dropping it and giving yourself a black eye and I do know someone who did that <laughs> if I was backpacking and it was dumping rain outside as I was like three nights ago and I didn't have anything to read and I didn't have anything to do and I was by myself and I was like waiting out horrible weather, this would be the coolest thing. Ooh. Oh my gosh. This is the perfect place to inflate a pack raft. <laughs> What a perfect lake. Boom! This pack raft is from a company called Soup High Adventure Gear. And I have the pack raft. I have an inflator bag that they sent me. To blow this up, I'm gonna get out another piece of funky gear. This super light backpacking stool. This stool is from a brand called Hill Sound. This is the BTR ultralight stool. It goes to 14 inches of height. It weighs practically nothing. <laughs> That's it. I mean, yeah, it's pretty cozy. <laughs> this stool is like so tiny. I feel like there's almost no excuse to not bring it. All right, you ready to see this thing? Oh my gosh. Oh. oh my gosh, it's so tiny. I have wanted a pack raft for so long, especially living in places that have these gorgeous alpine lakes, but I've always just felt like they're so heavy and I couldn't really justify it. And then I learned about this one from Supai Adventure Gear, and I was like, this is just incredible. Let's get it inflated and take it out for a spin. That is good inflate. Oh. 
this might take a bit. I think that once this gets totally inflated with the pump sack, then you're supposed to attach the tube because then you can like fully and you like get the last little bit in there. And I think that stays attached to the rack, which is what keeps air from coming out. I think it's time to take this out on the water. Oh, I am excited. Oh, I'm also nervous. It is wild how light this is. <laughs> Here we go. Woo. Burr. Woo -hoo 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 -burr. Oh man, that water's cold. No words for how cool this is. This is incredible. <laughs> if you know me, you know that I am very rarely speechless and this is one of the coolest and most serene experiences that i've ever had and i kind of don't know what to say about it <laughs> this is amazing where i am right now is kind of like on the edge of where the lake really opens up so behind me this is where i just came from is this little like island kind of and then way in the distance is where Rainer and Abby are. This is so unbelievable. This raft is incredibly comfortable. It is definitely perfectly sized for like somebody about my height because my feet are right up against it. And then I can kind of like lean back as I slouch in here. <laughs> so I feel like if I was a little bit taller, it may be easier to sit upright, but if you were a little bit shorter, you could probably like scooch down in here even more. There are definitely some challenges. Like the raft itself doesn't really want to track very well. So it kind of like sways side to side as you're paddling, but that's just the nature of a small boat or like a small watercraft of some kind. It's not because of this pack raft like specifically. But aside from that, I mean, my gosh, Supai Adventure Gear has created something really, really rad. <laughs> okay, let's get out in the water a little bit, yeah? Out we go. We are now getting to a part of the lake where it is very deep. And since I don't have a life vest, I'm not gonna go all the way out there. I'm gonna stay where I can still see the bottom of the lake. I just keep thinking to myself, oh my gosh, there are so many amazing lakes that I went to this year where this would have been perfect, especially on solo trips. And if I had had this raft earlier in the year, I mean, I think it probably would have wound up coming on the majority of my backpacking trips to Alpine Lakes. It weighs so little, so easy to inflate. It is like super easy to pack. It's almost like, why wouldn't I bring this? Just for the opportunity to sit out here in the middle of this lake and get to just see this gorgeous Alpine environment from a totally new perspective. This is your sign to get a pack raft. If you've been wanting one, do it. <laughs> this is amazing. Yeah. You guys want to take it for a spin? Yeah. Okay. I don't know how to do this like neatly. Come get me. <laughs> Somebody save me. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hold me. <laughs> Hold the rat. Hold the rat. Oh my God. I'm going to get I'm the rat. I'm I'm I wait to get my hand. Yeah. No, wait, don't go. <laughs> Come on out. Ah. Oh, the girl's right there. Ah. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Oh my god. <laughs> Woo! Alright, who's next? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yeah, very good. Woo oh yeah! Okay. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Sailor's life is the only life. <laughs> you are so annoying. <laughs> Yo-ho, Captain Stutter, yo-ho, <laughs> Sailor's wife. 
This is awesome. Yeah. Verdict, 11 out of 10. <laughs> May, 13 out of 10. Wow. This is a special experience. I love this thing. Nice. Okay. Pop that booty down. <laughs> Got it. Oh, wow. wow, that was actually the most graceful of all of us. Yeah. <laughs> you need antidepressants when you have a pack wrap. This thing rocks. Ah, oh, nice. Wow, it's so light. I'm just chucking over there on the grass. Mm. Now it is time to go back up to our campsite, make some drinks, and start thinking about dinner. Woo! The way you say drinks as drinks, it just lets me know that you're cool. Thank you. <laughs> as if you didn't already know that. One of my favorite pieces of funky gear that I picked out to bring on this trip is this ultralight tree table. I am going to grab my fanny pack to use as a strap and attach this to the tree. This one, these are the little braces. This one goes, we put it against the tree. And we take the fanny pack, wait, hold on. Okay, this is a two person table, Rainer. <laughs> Wait, one second, I'm twisted. Hold on, hold on. Sorry, this is important business here. <laughs> We're professionals. What is this? What is this? Ah! I apologize. <laughs> okay, it's okay, it's okay. Okay, don't move. Ah! Ah! You're useless. I'm holding it. Here's the test. Okay, ultimate test. Stable table? Stable table. Dot com. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, that was really hard to do by myself. Now, this table does come with a strap that you can use. I just decided I would try and use my fanny pack because one thing that they say is that like a lot of true ultralighters will wanna use something they already carry with them rather than like using the strap that they provide. But I might try this again with the strap that they provide. Table goes here. There we go. That feels better. That feels pretty stable. Table. I guess the idea is that if you're like at camp and you're like, oh, I need a place to put my coffee straw, which we'll talk about tomorrow. I need a place to put my tiny spatula. Which we'll also talk about tomorrow. I need a place for my little frying pan, which we'll also talk about tomorrow. Then you have a perfect little table for all of that stuff. These little things on the side, these little like notches are actually supposed to be so that you could like hang your sporks or other stuff. Hang this off the side. <laughs> there you have it, a perfect little table. They've designed these little legs so you can put like a stick underneath here between these two, and then you can actually hang something from it, such as your water filter. Boop. And then use this as a place to hang stuff, like dry out your clothes or whatever. Boop. Feed it through. One of my biggest problems with using this Canuck bag and my Sawyer filter as like a gravity filter system is trying to find a good place to hang up this bag. But now with a tree and a little table and a stick and this little tightener from Common Gear, boom, we have a place to hang your water. Come on, y'all. This is cool. This is like proper camping now. Just this is, I'm, oh, I can't <laughs> <laughs> Cheers! Cheers! <laughs> Woo! It is time to make some dinner 
this is the bear locker from Adotech gear. This is a bear proof bag, similar to an Ursac, which is what Abby and Rainer are both using. But this one that I have is actually what they call a black bear and critter bag, meaning that this bag itself has not been certified by the interagency grizzly bear committee, which is a real thing <laughs> to make it like grizzly bear proof. In between the time that I got this bag and we're making this video, Adotech has gotten their certification for the IGBC grizzly bear proof bag. There are not very many options for non canister versions of bags on the market. And the most popular version of a bear bag versus a bear canister is the Ursac. The Ursac is awesome, but it is black. So it can be sometimes kind of hard to like see inside at all of your stuff. Whereas the Adotech is white, which means that looking for your food is super easy. It is considerably lighter than other bear proof bags on the market. It is also more expensive, but it's considerably more durable and also more water repellent. You can pull this cord tight, which will probably take some effort. Once this is cinched totally tight and there's no gaps, you then tie some overhand knots here, just like you would with a ursac, and then you can tie this to a tree like a tree trunk. And you have a black bear resistant bag. There you have it, Adotech ultra lightweight bear locker. My bear bag is really cool, but one of the even cooler things that I have with me and something I'm really excited about trying is my pot. I chose to bring the Vargo bot pot. And this is called the bot because it doubles as a bottle or a container as well as a pot. So this is a screw top lid that screws on. Makes like a kind of terrible noise, but still. This is a airtight and liquid tight lid on this pot. That I can cold soak food in here, or I can put snacks in here, or I can put extra water in here or whatever, and then seal this up and chuck it in my pack. Because I love the idea of the bot, like having something that can be a cold soak container or a food container in your pack and then a pot or a cup when you get to camp. So I'm really jazzed to use it. I'm gonna use this to boil my water tonight for my dinner, which is also actually kind of fun and funky food. And then overnight tonight, I'm actually going to soak my oats in here so that I can have cold oats when I wake up in the morning. Whew. Boom. Okay, we're just gonna set that lid on top. Okay, so the bot does not have a handle on it to remove it from the flame. So I brought back one of the first pieces of funky ultralight gear that I ever tried. This Mixa pot lifter. And I laughed about it a lot. And now I have brought it on my trip to be used to lift this off. <laughs> okay. All right, that's it. There we go. Pop it into the Big Sky International. While my ramen is rehydrating, it's time to make our potatoes. And now we're dumping warm water to the fill line. It's pink. <laughs> this is wild. Pink mash. <laughs> what? What? Oh my God, this is so insanely good. What the heck? The rosemary and the beet, it's like, oh, what a great flavor combo. Wow, I did not expect this to be so good. Oh my God, it's like the best mashed potatoes I've ever had in my life. Mm. If you don't like mashed potatoes, you won't like it. If you don't like savory, mushy food, you're not gonna like it. But if you do, oh, it's so good. It's really tasty, super flavorful. It's gotten really dark. So I'm going to finish eating and then I'll see you when I get in my tent. It is just after 8.30 now and I am cozied up in my sleeping bag. I finished eating and was like putting all of my stuff away. We were all just kind of chatting and Abby was like, wait a second, what's that in the sky? And we looked out and we could see the Aurora Borealis. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my god. Oh, oh my god. Cry. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, look at this happy. I know. It's getting better. Oh my god. What? All of us were immediately just 
completely in shock. It was stunning. The realization of what we were seeing was like unbelievable. I have never seen the Northern Lights before. And so to be wrapping up dinner at a beautiful campsite after a incredible day, like just a gorgeous hike, a gorgeous lake, everything was so perfect about today. And then on top of that, to see the Northern Lights in the sky, it was a, a once in a lifetime experience. We kept like seeing the lights just dance across the sky. We watched for a really long time. It was one of the most serene, and spectacular experiences I've ever had. I'm all cozied up in my liner. I have my pillow strap holding my pillow in place. All in all, feeling quite cozy. I'm gonna get some sleep and I'll check in with you tomorrow morning. Good night. Good morning. Last night was a beautiful night. It was very clear for a lot of the night. I slept quite cozily in the sleeping bag. Sleeping bag liner. I'm currently wearing it as a skirt. I loved it. Pillow strap, so great. Kept my pillow in place. Quick little update for you. There's a bunch of clouds in the sky. We did a weather check on my Garmin and it looks like it's actually gonna start raining in about two hours here. It's okay though, like I'm okay with there being rain coming in because last night was just so incredible. Had a little rain this morning, I'm like, all right, that's fine nature, I understand. <laughs> We're gonna start thinking about getting packed up before breakfast. And then I will show you the final pieces of my funky ultralight backpacking gear. You can even hear the wind. I am boiling some water to make some coffee this morning. So I am using another piece of super funky ultralight backpacking gear for my coffee. And that is the Joko. This is a straw with a filter on the end of it. And so you boil water, you put coffee grounds into your hot water, stir it directly with this, and then you drink straight out of the straw. So I'm excited to try it out, but I'm a little bit curious about how it will work and about like what a mess it might create in the bottom of my pot. It's basically like making cowboy coffee, but then you filter it with the straw. Grounds directly in your hot water, stir, let it marinate, and then drink it. And it filters out the grounds so that you're not drinking coffee grounds. Also, last night I was so distracted by the Aurora Borealis that I completely forgot to make my overnight oats in my bot pot. I am going to probably boil some water and just eat my oats hot this morning instead. In this little tower, I have oil for greasing my pan when I make pancakes, my coffee grounds, and then a little bit of powdered milk. According to Jogo, you just put your coffee into the hot water. This is freshly ground Leavenworth Coffee Roasters coffee. I'm gonna add a little bit of powdered milk. Now time for the Jogo. <laughs> tastes like water that walked past coffee. I'm not impressed with just putting grounds in here and using the Jogo, but when I've made cowboy coffee once before, I kind of let the water boil for about a minute with the grounds in there. So that's what we're gonna try. Maybe we'll add some more coffee too. I will say it's a bit alarming to have something hot come out of a straw, but yeah, the little silicone tip is nice. <laughs> we're gonna give it like a minute now I'm gonna try it and see how it tastes. I'm not getting anything. I'm also sucking very gently because I'm scared. <laughs> Shut up, both of you. <laughs> okay, well, um, I got a little tiny bit and I didn't like it. Let's see if I can get more. Okay.
okay, okay. That is better. It tastes more like coffee now that I have to kind of drink off the top of it because there's just like a lump of coffee grounds in the very bottom. Can I be honest? I would never go through this process backpacking. Maybe I'm still doing something wrong. So if you are like a diehard lover of the Jogo and you know what I've done incorrectly, please let me know. But yeah, I mean, it's okay. It, it makes an okay cup of coffee, <laughs> but it does taste like coffee and it is coffee and I'm gonna drink it and be happy. <laughs> I was about to make some pancakes with my mini frying pan, but we noticed that these massive storm clouds are starting to roll in and the wind has picked up, and the temperature is dropping. That's a pretty sure sign that the rain is coming. I feel like it's not very realistic to make pancakes when there's bad weather rolling in. I'm sorry that I didn't get a chance to show you my mini frying pan and mini spatula, but I think it's just the smart choice to start thinking about getting out of here. Oh, I can see rain. Oh, I can see rain falling. Pivot! <laughs> Time to pack up camp. <laughs> oh, there is a rainbow, at least, which is a huge plus. Just kind of peeking through the clouds. We packed up all of our stuff just as the rain was starting. It is really raining out here and the rain is only supposed to get heavier as the day goes on. So we're gonna try and book it out of here before the rain gets a lot heavier and our trail gets a lot muddier. When I get back to the car, I will let you know which of these pieces of ultralight funky backpacking gear might make their way into my core backpacking kit. But now it is time to head out of here. Look at these little rain babies. Wow, wet. that's what she said. <laughs> Ready, woohoo, Pacific Northwest. Woo yeah, goodbye lake. Let's get out of here. We just got back to the trailhead and we mercifully have a little bit of a break in the rain. After testing all of this funky ultralight backpacking gear, I think there are a couple pieces of gear that will likely make their way into my core backpacking kit. And that is for sure the pillow strap and I think also the pad pal. I love the convenience of being able to inflate my sleeping pad without having to use a pump sack. The pack liner might not be in my core kit year round, but I think I'm gonna use it a lot more this winter and as I do more cold weather backpacking, cause it was really cozy. There's a few other things that might not make their way into my core backpacking kit, but will definitely be perfect for specific types of trips. Things like the caveman TV, the table, and definitely the pack raft. That pack raft to me was an absolute standout on this trip. The bot pot, I'm still not sold on, but I do like the concept of it. And I'm still planning on making pancakes with that mini spatula and the mini frying pan once I have a trip with the weather's cooperating. <laughs> with that, I think that our harder rain is coming. So I'm gonna get out of here. I feel like I curated a pretty funky and fun kit of ultralight backpacking gear. But if you wanna see even funkier backpacking gear or more videos like this, let me know in the comments below. As always, if you liked this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel, and I will see you outside. Bye! Uh, uh, uh. Woo. Woo. Patrick. Miranda's naming my sweat stains like a normal person would, like anyone would. Patrick and Lucinda. <laughs> and little babies, Bonnie. Billy and Bo. Have you ever felt so exposed? <laughs> I, I, this is a new feeling. I don't know what this is. <laughs> Pure joy. All right, show me the map. <laughs> this is what it's like to watch the room for the first time. <laughs>